Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you the uh, pre-flight checks of this uh, Piper Warrior behind me. When I first started uh, flying, I found it actually pretty hard to, to remember all the steps and even with the checklist in hand, you don't always exactly know what to, uh, what to look for. So uh, watch along, uh, pause, rewind uh, as much as you need. If you have any questions, put them down below in the, in the comments and I'll try to help you. Uh, and of course, if you like my video, click uh, like and subscribe somewhere down there in the uh, bottom right corner. Let's uh, hop in. So I like to do my uh, walk around in uh, two laps, one uh, electrical, and one for all the non-electrical parts. And uh, the reason for that is that if you keep the electrical uh, switches on for too long on the ground, especially in the winter, you may run out of, uh, out of batteries. So we're going to start with the uh, electrical part, which means, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, turn uh, everything off to make sure nothing unexpected happens when we uh, turn on the power. So we're going to check first uh, down here to see that the uh, magnetos are off. We check that all the switches are off. Now light switch off, 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 all are off. I'm going to check that all the circuit breakers underneath here are all uh, in and checked. Check the mixture is off. So uh, the plane is fully off. So nothing is really going to happen except for some, uh, some things are going to start. In some planes you have one of these buttons to turn off all the avionics. This one doesn't have it. So we turn off all the equipment separately on the shutdown and check all the, uh, all the little buttons and check that they're all off. Then uh, what I'm going to do is start by turning on the uh, master switch. Uh, that actually turns on the on the power and we see that uh, well essentially nothing happens except for the the avionics that are always on on, uh, on this plane and the first thing to check are the uh, fuel tank indicators so we have left and right here we check and we remember uh, what it says so later we can visually see that the same amount of fuel is actually also in the tank and they are uh, correct so in this case they say 15 and just under 10 we can look that uh, we can look that up Second step is that we check the little button here for the what we call the enunciator panel to check that the warning lights actually work because if the light is broken you wouldn't see what is, uh, what is wrong with it. Uh, and then we're going to turn on some of the equipment and do the, the first electrical outside uh, walk around to see what, uh, what is working and all the lights are, are on. So we turn on the navigation light which is the button on the left here. Turn on the landing light, turn on the anti-collision light, there are little strobes on the, on the side. And turn on the uh, pitot heat uh, that, is, uh, that is heating the pitot probe under the, under the wing. Uh, now we get out and make the first, uh, first walk around and do the first uh, lap of uh, electrical checks. So we start at the uh, right wing and we check that the strobe light and the green uh, navigation light are working. Now we continue to the nose, so follow along, we walk around the plane. And we take a look here at the uh, landing light at the, uh, the front of the plane. It's the, the LED light over here. That should be working as well. Then we continue onto the left wing, which is uh, slightly different than the right, because on the left one, we also want to check the uh, stall warnings. There's a little flap here, uh, and that flap actually activates and triggers the warning. Then also on the left wing, of course, we check the, uh, the lights. So in this case, we have a red navigation light and a white strobe light as well. Underneath, we have the uh, Pito Pro, for which we turned on the, uh, the heat inside the cockpit. We're going to check that it's actually heated. So dive underneath. And underneath the wing, we see this part here. And we can feel that it's heated, that it's warm, so the, the heat is working. So we continue to the, uh, the back of the plane, where we have a uh, strobe light on top of the tail. It's an anti-collision beacon as well and a uh, white uh, navigation light that is, uh, that is on it, that's uh, up here. Uh, after the electrical lap, which is quite short because we don't want to uh, drain the batteries, we go back inside and turn all the switches off. So turn, on the pit turn off the pitot heat, anti-collision lights, landing lights, navigation lights and master switch. Uh, and that concludes the electrical part. And uh, so we've kept the time that the battery is being used to, uh, to a minimum. And now we're going to do the second lap for everything that is non-electrical and all the uh, mechanical parts of the, of the plane. So for the non-electrical uh, portion, we start on the floor with the fire extinguisher. Check that the uh, pressure is in the green. We check that it's uh, firmly attached and the security pin is, uh, is in there. Then also on the floor, there are two little buttons here underneath the uh, seat which drain the Pito static system. So they take water uh, out of any of the lines that's in there. So we press both of the buttons hold them a little uh, and let go uh, and from there we start to work uh, our way up 
uh, and we're going to do all the checks uh, in order. So the uh, next check is for the uh, flight controls. So we're going to be moving all the controls uh, and of course check that they're not locked, check that they're all moving smoothly and check that they're all moving correctly. So what I usually do is start uh, all the way forward and turn it left. And then one trick is the, the thing you point towards has to move up. So when we move left, the left aileron goes up. When we pull it all the way back, the uh, elevator goes up in the back. Then when we turn it all the way right, uh, the right control goes up and when we push it all the way forward, well, the elevator goes back down. And that whole loop has to move uh, smoothly, uh, no resistance, no strange things. And of course now we also know that they're all connected uh, correctly and in the right uh, direction. There's actually a video on, on YouTube of an airliner where they had them the wrong way around and those guys really struggled to get, uh, to get back on the ground. I'll put the, put the link. After the uh, primary controls, I also want to check the uh, trim. And the easiest way to do it is to pull the controls all the way back. Because then at the top of the tail, through the window, we can see, actually see the, the trim tab and we can see it move. And what I'll do is roll the trim wheel all the way uh, forward. See it move all the way up. Uh, and then at the stop, I want to move it all the way backwards. I want to make sure it's moving smoothly, it's not getting stuck anywhere. I want to see out the window that it's moving back again. It's quite a long way, there we are. Uh, and then finally, I want to put it in uh, neutral, put it at the little N uh, figure in the middle. So it's already prepared for the, uh, the takeoff that comes afterwards. And then uh, after the trim, I also want to check that the uh, flaps actually work and I want to fully uh, extend them because then I can actually check them on the, uh, on the outside walk around. So I'm going to pull the, the little, well, let's call it handbrake handle here, move up, look out the window, then both the, the flaps move and then they're equally extended and move all the way in the, uh, in the downwards position. Uh, and then finally, before I start to do the walk around, I'm also going to turn on the, uh, the fuel because on the outside we're actually going to use the, the fuel drains uh, to check that the correct fuel is in the airplane and there's nothing wrong with it. So I'll switch this to the left tank so it's actually open and we can, uh, we can get some fuel. So then uh, we get out for the, uh, the second lap around the, the plane. On the outside, we start again with the uh, right wing. And uh, what I'm going to look at are the flaps here. They should move a little like this, uh, but not too much. I want to know they're not stuck, uh, but also that they're firmly attached to the, uh, to the controls. In the bottom here, we can actually see the part where they are uh, attached. We can see that it's, uh, that it's set up correctly. And then uh, next up, we're going to check the ailerons. So we're going to move them by uh, hand, and we're going to check underneath. We're going to duck under the wing, and we can actually look here at the, uh, the gap there's nothing uh, obstructing it, nothing is, is in between. And over here we can see the little connector that, uh, that holds them to the controls. When you put your fingers in between, always uh, hold with the other hand in case the winds move them. You don't want to lose uh, a finger there. And then we'll continue to the end of the wing here, at the end of the aileron, where we have this little static wick, which is uh, important to help the plane discharge any static energy that it gets from moving through the air or moving through, uh, through clouds. And then we move to the end of the wing. While you uh, walk around and look at the front, it's especially important to, uh, to check that the, uh, the front of the wing is uh, fully clean. There's nothing uh, on it, no contaminations. There's no ice on top of the wing, there are no dents in it. So just look at the, the shape of the wing and check that the whole thing is exactly looking as you're expecting it to, uh, to look. Next, you want to look uh, inside the, uh, the fuel tanks. We're going to open it up, uh, look in, check uh, on the side that, uh, that there is actually uh, just under 10 gallon in there as we uh, saw on the fuel indicators in the, in the cockpit. So we know the indicator is, uh, is correct, it's working and the fuel cap is on securely. Next we dive uh, under the wing, check the uh, tire, check the uh, tire thread is on there, properly inflated, no, uh, no damage to it. You can see the uh, brake disc and brake pads here and you can check that the hydraulic strut that actually the, the plane uh, lands on uh, is properly inflated should be around uh, four and a half inches, 11 centimeters, or a much more practical, uh, about one and a half fist to hold your hand next to it, you can see. And you want to see no leaks, and you want to see it uh, it's stable. Uh, after the strut, you also want to take a quick look at the cabin air intake uh, over here. It has to be free and, uh, and clean. And then we're going to continue to the, uh, to the nose compartment. So we continue at the uh, nose compartment itself. There's two little clips here that you can turn and pull to open it up. Uh, we can take a look inside and what you want to see on the uh, bottom is that everything is clean, there's no oil or other fluids dripping. Uh, you want to take a quick look at all the, the cables, that the insulation is still there, nothing is chafing or, or, or getting opened. And then very important, we're going to check the uh, oil level itself. 
uh, which is this little cap, we unscrew it, and it's really just like uh, a car. Use a little bit of paper, clean uh, the stick itself, so we're not dripping on the, uh, on the bottom of the plane, because well, that, that will make uh, the next one find oil and be uh, scared that something is leaking. We put it back in once it's clean, and we pull it out. Uh, and then we take a look at our little markers here, uh, and what we want it to be is at uh, six quarts. The, uh, the manual of the plane will describe the absolute uh, minimum and maximum that you, that you need. In this case, the uh, minimum, absolute minimum is uh, two quarts according to the, to the book. But we want to fly it with, uh, with six. Uh, and you cannot fill it more than eight because it will come back out as the maximum, uh, maximum capacity. So once uh, that is okay, we can close it back up. <clears throat> so once you've closed it back up, you want to reach inside here, the gap between the propeller and the cowling, and you can feel with your fingers the, the rubber alternator belt. And it should be nicely tight. It should be about well, maximum one or two centimeters play in it, uh, which is important because it powers all the electrical instruments inside the, uh, the plane. Then we continue to the, uh, to the nose compartment. Uh, we actually want to check that the propeller itself has no damage, so uh, there's no cracks or any holes or, uh, or gaps in it. Same on the other side, to check that the, uh, the leading edge is okay, that the blade itself has no, uh, has no cracks. To check the uh, spinner, don't push it too hard, there's only little screws, don't push the plane by it, just to make, check, make sure that it's nicely, uh, nicely attached. Then in the uh, nose compartment, you want to check these uh, holes for the cooling air uh, intake. Uh, what you can see behind actually are the, uh, the cooling air fins of the engine, so that's how it gets, uh, how it gets cooled. Uh, especially important uh, if the plane has flown, because there are stories of uh, birds getting in there within 30 minutes uh, of parking, uh, because it's nice and warm, of course, if it having, uh, being warmed up by the, uh, by the engine. And uh, underneath, you want to check the, uh, the air intake holes itself here. Same thing, they should be clear, they should be, uh, should be good. Uh, and then we continue with the uh, nose wheel. The uh, nose wheel check uh, is actually very much the same as the main wheels. You want to check there's thread on it, no uh, weird damages. Uh, and you want to check that the, uh, the strut here is properly inflated, not leaking. It's supposed to be a little bit lower. I'd say about three and a half inches, eight, eight centimeters, or just over one uh, fist is the right, uh, the right inflation height that you want to, uh, want to see here. Then on the uh, left wing, you want to check uh, the same things as on the right. So you want to check, uh, of course, again, the wheel, the brakes, air intake. You want to look in the, in the fuel. You want to check that the wing itself is, uh, is clean and, uh, and clear. I'm not going to do all of that because it will take forever. But there's one difference to the left wing compared to the right, uh, which is that you want to check the uh, pyto intake underneath. And that's on here. We have the uh, pyto tube uh, with at the front and at the bottom two holes to measure the uh, dynamic and static pressure. And what you want to see is that there's no cover on it, it's clean, there's nothing, no insects or otherwise in the, in the little holes uh, to check that it's working. And uh, finally, you want to take a look at the uh, tail of the aircraft. So you want to see the tail itself over here that is nicely attached, uh, no wrinkles, no cracks, uh, no one slammed it into ground somehow. And finally, inside here, you want to look uh, under the tail. So we want to move this part, so that it's moving freely, just like the ailerons. And you want to look inside here to check that all the, uh, the bolts are on and everything is securely, uh, securely attached. So that's the uh, outside walk around portion of the uh, check almost completed. There are uh, two final things you really want to do. One is take uh, a look at the plane as a whole, because we've been very zoomed in on all these little parts and looking around. But of course, you also just want to check, does the whole thing look good? And especially, does the surrounding look good to, to go? So check that there are no tow bars or blocks in any of the, the wheels. The tie-down ropes are removed. There's not a little, I don't know, ladder or anything that was used by someone that's standing in your way before you taxi. Because from the cockpit, you can't always see all of it and you have no mirror. So take a final good look and say, yes, this one is good to go. And then uh, the last thing we want to do uh, is drain the fuel, which you want to do uh, after fueling. We're going to take uh, a little bit of fuel from both of the wings and from the main uh, fuel strainer to check that actually only uh, fuel and no water is, uh, is coming out. And there's no contamination in the fuel and everything is, uh, is good to go. Uh, so let's take that last step and then uh, we're good to go. The uh, fuel check itself is actually relatively simple. Underneath the, uh, the wings, there are these little ports, uh, they're above both of the, of the wheels. You can take this little plastic cup, you press it against it, which will open a valve and some fuel comes out. And you want to check the contents of this, that there's nothing uh, floating in it and it's a light bluish uh, consistent color. So that's only fuel and no, uh, no water. Uh, and then we have this little jerry can to, uh, to put it back in 
so it's not spilling and we can uh, save the environment. So both wings work the same way. The ports are uh, above the wheel, you press the, the thing in it. But there's a third one here on the left side of the nose. It's roughly a little bit behind the, uh, the nose wheel. We just connect it to the, uh, to the fuel strainer, so the front central port. Which is why in the cockpit part we actually opened the, uh, the fuel selector, because that opens this port. Uh, we do the same here, we press it against it, uh, we take a little bit of fuel and we look that there's nothing uh, but light, uh, lightly blue coloured fuel in it. That's it, we're uh, ready to go. If you have any questions, put them in the, in the comments. And, uh, and again, of course, uh, subscribe if you like my uh, videos. Thanks for watching, bye.